Today we're at the Isle of Dogs. Now, a skull came up in April 2009. Uh, it's found by Nick Stevens, uh, and he's here with us today. And we came down yesterday and we found a little bit more of the body. Now, the other reason that we're very interested in this site is that we are very close to the site of the Great Eastern, um, where the, the huge ship was constructed and where it was launched. So uh, those are the two reasons that we've come to the Isle of Dogs today. Pretty much, uh, I think it was last April, I was out one evening with my dog and uh, just coming up and down here looking for stuff. Um, and uh, I was just on my way back and looked down and saw this uh, skull looking up at me from the mud. First thing I did was call the police. I knew the tide was on the way back in, so I basically put a big metal stake in the ground to mark it off. Uh, about 20 minutes later, I was joined by about three policemen and a forensic guy. Um, the tide had come in at that point, so we had a quick discussion as to what we should do, whether we should leave it, take it, and the consensus was that we should take the skull out there and then. And that was it really, so, um, so in the meantime I met Natalie and we got sort of talking about the skull and um, thankfully she was able to sort out getting a carbon a test done on it so at least we could find out the age of the person, you know, when she'd have lived, this girl, apparently a young girl who the skull belongs to. And then so we came back just before Christmas to sort of try and find the spot. Unfortunately somebody had pulled the marker out so um, I was able to sort of determine pretty much where, where it was so um, it wasn't a particularly low tide back before Christmas so we came back yesterday to come have a look at low tide and unbelievably Natalie found a plane sticking out of the mud and um, we had a bit of a scrape around and some ribs and a couple of vertebrae, um, a collarbone so we figure that this is the spot and hopefully we found the rest of this uh, unfortunate person so uh, this is what we're going to do now. Okay, we've just demonstrated one of the foreshore hazards here, trying to excavate carefully, and uh, Thames Clipper has just gone past rather fast, and uh, we've had a big wash, and uh, now we're going to go and see uh, what's back in the hole. We're looking at a very nice timber slipway made of very substantial timbers, a lot of the timbers seem to be reused from ships because they've got a lot of peg holes in them, some with a peg still in them. And the interesting thing about the planks is they look about the same size as the planks used on the Great Eastern slip launch, which we're looking at way over the back there. And I do wonder if these have been pinched from a ship, used for the Great Eastern launch, and then reused here. So they had a very long life. So this is recycling timbers in a major way. Yeah, because this looks like, oh, the, this looks like the left forearm, this is the elbow, Right. and that's the right humerus, Okay. going down there. So now we've managed to recover the bones, um, we're putting them in plastic bags, we're going to label them up. Um, then they'll be going off to the Museum of London Archaeology and they will be uh, cleaning them, identifying them um, and letting us know a bit more about the person that was buried here. Finding human remains on the foreshore is amazing at the best of times, but to find an articulated skeleton in a grave cut is absolutely astounding. And we're really looking forward to the final results from the Museum of London Osteoarchaeologist examination of the skeleton. But we'll be back to the Isle of Dogs and to the Great Eastern Launch Site to look at the archaeology down there very soon.